Um, I work with a group of people who are um, sponsoring small trials for breast cancer prevention. We're very interested in making our small trials more efficient because um, the larger trials are so um, intense in cost and resources that uh, we need a way of looking at the many opportunities we have for prevention um, and doing that in a way that uh, doesn't require so many resources and um, doesn't require so many years of testing. So we're looking for efficiencies in the way we go about testing um, um, interventions. Um, we have two um, targets that have been developed for breast cancer, and um, one of those has um, been developed quite effectively for breast cancer prevention as well. And there's a hope um, that HER2 new, the second target, will um, also be um, a source of prevention in the future. But right now, um, our main preventive efforts um, center on the estrogen receptor as a target. So uh, one of the goals is to find other targets, particularly targets that would work for ER negative breast cancer. But you can see we have a problem because we wouldn't be calling it ER negative breast cancer if we knew quite what the target was. So um, a number of agents that don't work through the estrogen receptor have been um, examined for potential in preventing breast cancer. And um, studies have been done with uh, DFMO, with um, Targretin, um, with Sulindac, um, a number of agents. But these past efforts have all focused on proliferation as a way of um, targeting prevention. So now we're hopeful that with recent molecular biology developments that we actually have um, a new period of um, being able to target um, molecular tissue abnormalities. And so one of these abnormalities has been detected in women who are BRCA1 mutation carriers. Um, these women have entire lobules that are biomolecularly um, consistent with um, primitive stem cells, um, although this molecular change has taken place without a tissue abnormality being associated. So this is one of the first times that we've had normal tissue with a marker that would direct us to do prevention. And in the recent trials with um, BRCA1 um, uh, tumors in breast cancer, PARP inhibitors have been a focus. And so now the question is raised as to whether we might actually be able to use PARP inhibitors for prevention and look at these risk markers of abnormal lobules in the BRCA1 mutation carriers. Um, there's great hope that these new developments um, and the BRCA1 mutation um, tissue abnormalities, as an example, um, foretell of um, a new era of cancer prevention research um, and um, a new opportunity to conduct small trials to get um, you know, very um, accurate predictive results about what we might do in larger confirmatory trials. We're actually working on that um, at this time. Um, I know that there are two groups already who are interested in doing that, but we don't actually have prevention trials with PARP inhibitors started yet, but we are working on them.